raise up your right hand to the heavens and declare this loud and clear anywhere I go this week darkness must scatter in the name of Jesus open your mouth and decree it Darkness must scatter. Oh, Pupu. Yo, Tuka. In Jesus' name we pray. Ni Oruko Jesu. La Padura. Please have your seat. God bless you. Confirm that you have this pamphlet in your hand. Erida Jupe, ni we pelebe, li owo yi. These are the aims for this year, 70 days prayer and fasting. Orita o ma konino a we ati adura. So let's begin to look at it little by little now. Look at the second page. The song is called Lord Enthroned in Heavenly Splendor. First begotten from the dead. Thou alone our strong defender. Oh, Lifted up thy people's head. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus, true and living bread. Jesus, Leon. Listen to the orchestra play the song. And follow it on your pamphlet. Because I'm, because I'm going to ask you to sing it yourself. to me and the orchestra sing it now. Let's go. Lord and throne in heaven is playing first begotten from the dead. Thou alone a strong defender lift us up thy people's head. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, true and living bread. Congregation, can I hear you now? Sing like David's song, dance like David's dance. You are the Lord, that is your name. You will never share your glory with anyone. You will never share your glory with anybody. Almighty God, that is your name.
before you sit down. These are foundational prayers. Deep, deep, deep prayers. To be a tragedy if you keep quiet this morning. You need to cry to the heavens before the early angels depart from here. Say powers. That wants a man's value to increase before striking him down. 
to di pe won fa lule sisters are you here eyan ra bi se can you see what i said o ti mo wi e wi tele mi power that wants a man's value to increase before striking him down can I hear the sister shouting it? Go in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to decree against such powers. Yes. Yes. Somebody is breaking through with the prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Surprise! Shouting death. On my increase. Brothers, can I hear you shouting this loud? At least any time the person wants to increase the two because he die. Can you shout this loud? Your time is up. Die. In the name of Jesus. sister here and your, your uncle categorically told you not a dream he told you that you will not prosper if you are that sister run to the other very quickly there's an angel by your side to help you here this morning to remove those curses from your life Everybody will shout this loud and clear. Power base. Shout it with hatred. You are not angry enough. Of infirmity in my life. Death. In the name of Jesus. Up 
open that mouth open that mouth destroy the power base of infirmity Jesus this is not a money to negotiate in Jesus name we pray get ready for a prophetic action your head is the symbol of your destiny right there where you are as you shake that head vigorously the spirit of death and hell the curses upon the heads shall go back to the senders please be quiet just shake that head now shake it vigorously even if you are having headaches keep shaking it something is happening yes Check it. Amen. Check it. Amen. Check it. person on the gallery this woman on the gallery shake that head well an evil hand has been laid upon that head before shake it shake it shake it off amen Father, we thank you for another money before you. And we thank you for preserving our lives to this very last Sunday of this month. Accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. Father, open our understanding. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let's have a seat. God bless you. We continue our teaching on power of discipleship power of discipleship I've explained to you in previous teachings who disciples are and how the Lord wants us to become disciples not just believers not just Christians he wants to make disciples if you are coming to church and you are not a disciple you will not make heaven there is a difference between being a member of a church and being a disciple of Jesus Christ Jesus is calling for disciples no, not just church members in Luke chapter 9 Luke chapter 9 verse 23 Luke 9 23 Luke 9 23 and he said to them all if any man will come after me let him deny himself let him take up his cross daily and follow me he should deny himself he should take up his cross daily and follow Christ that's some writers so Jesus calls us who are the turmoil of our lives wide see 
day by day his sweet voice is sounding say Christian follow me but this you can be a Christian but you are not following Christ you follow me so follow me so a disciple is a learner a disciple is a follower the word Christian and Christians only occur once in scripture while the word disciple and disciples occur over 200 times a disciple is one who has made personal and passionate commitment to his master in that following that is following if he is not favored he will keep following if the place is not comfortable for him he is still following you are not a disciple if you are in a place and you are not happy there and you are grumbling you are complaining you are criticizing I'm not a disciple. A disciple follows whether that course of action is profitable to him, is unprofitable to him, whether he's happy there or he's not happy there, a disciple follows. When you say a person who is not happy where he is and he is complaining and grumbling and saying all kinds of things, he is not a disciple of that place. A disciple exhibits deep loyalty. A disciple, somebody who has personally made up his or her mind in rugged determination to follow the Lord. A disciple, somebody who is completely yielded to Christ. If Jesus says, Sit down, sit down. If Jesus said, Don't eat, even if the food is before him, he will eat it. If Jesus said, I don't want you with makeups, I don't want you with jewelries, he removes them. Every great person are people who learned how to obey who to obey and when to obey you can be born again without being a disciple let me say that again did you hear what I said you can be born again without being a, a disciple although you are born again if you are not his disciple that's why he says on the last day say, many will come unto me say Lord did we not heal the sick in your name did we not prophesy in your name did we not sing in your name did we not usher in your name did you not evangelize in your name you say yes you did but I don't know you you are not my disciple I don't know you you are just a temporary staff a, a, a casual liberal may you not be a casual liberal to Jesus in the name of Jesus a disciple seeks to become like his master he is systematic 
kindly and progressively rearranges it, rearranging his life to be like Christ. A disciple will enroll in Christ training school. So when he's enrolled in that kind of school, it becomes an agent of his master. It is because many believers are not disciples, that's why we're having all these issues and troubles. A disciple will not say, well, I asked them to give me a loan, they didn't give me a loan, I asked them to give me money, they didn't give me money, as if you have ch- turned the church to a bank, I asked them to give me money, they didn't give me money, I asked them to assist me, they didn't assist me, therefore, I'm angry, this is a bad place, I'm going. You are not a disciple, you are a trader. They're not a disciple. Some people, for some reason, they will lose one room apartment. One room. They lost one room. They will now write to church to hire for them a three bedroom flat. He was in one room. And when he said, No, we can help you with this as a welfare. Oh, they don't they don't have love. Those are not disciples. They are traders. There are many of them in the house of God. Will you be a disciple of Jesus? A disciple, somebody who comes to Jesus and you deliberately take his yoke upon your life. It is disciples who are able to solve spiritual problems. Not those who just come to church anyhow, they just come. A disciple becomes an agent of his master wherever he is. A disciple is somebody who takes the yoke of Jesus upon him. So take my yoke upon me and learn of me. A yoke is an interesting instrument. It's a wooden bar made by carpenters to put across the neck of two animals for the purpose of plowing. The necks are measured. So a yoke does not allow you to do what you like. Your movement is decided by the other party. So when Jesus said, take my yoke upon you, (laughs) means tie my neck to your neck. So, so you are now compelled to walk the same step as that same party. When the yoke is upon you, if you want to eat, you must consider the other party. If you want to drink, you consider the other party. That's why when two animals that are different are yoked together, it's a serious problem. You yoke a dog plus a goat, that is serious problem. This is the trouble with demons being yoked upon people's life. So when Jesus said, Take my yoke upon me, he's saying, Anywhere I go, you go. Anywhere I eat, you eat. Anywhere I drink, you drink. Anything I allow you to wear, you wear it. Then if you have voluntarily done this, without anybody coercing or forcing you, then you are officially a disciple. But if you do one leg in, one leg out. One way in church, 
when we answer you are confirmed not to be a disciple if you have another yoke upon you apart from the yoke of Jesus maybe the yoke of sin and you have only one neck then you cannot be a disciple of Jesus Christ there is only one way to become that disciple forsake every other thing and follow him listen beloved discipleship is the only method that God has for recruiting human beings who are going to be useful to him that's the only that's the only instrument he has for an apprentice to be like his master he has to learn so take my yoke upon you and learn of me so then you will have rest for your soul rest for your soul meaning that any believer who does not carry the yoke of Jesus cannot find rest or fulfillment of purpose of God any believer who is not a disciple cannot find any place in the kingdom of God a disciple is somebody who has decided to depend on his master for life before we start praying let me ask you some deep questions are you a member or a disciple are you a member or a disciple a member attends meetings gives tithes and offerings joins groups but a disciple learns to live the life his teacher lives and he teaches others to live like his master so the making of a disciple is the production of a duplicate duplicate Jesus in obedience in repentance in submission obedience repentance submission in commitment in perseverance in servanthood and faithfulness and in non-conformity with this terrible world it is easier to be reciting bible verses and be calling prayer points without living the life of a disciple the truth is this a good example is the best sermon you can preach let them find Christ in you a person is not educated no matter how many degrees you have <laughs> you are not educated until you learn how very little you know you know that you've got a PhD in English, PhD in history, PhD in chemistry, whatever, but there are other fields you know practically nothing. A failure in life is one who lives and fails to learn. We are going to spend just two hours here now. And it's a tragedy of life that many 
Sometimes people waste their own time. The two hours we're going to spend there now, we're never going to recover them forever. It's gone. But it's possible as a believer for you to be making sounds but getting nowhere. You may be making actions but getting nowhere. The trumpet of your life may be making an uncertain sound. Even as I'm speaking now, the person by your side that you brought here as your wife may actually not be your wife, may be somebody else. The, the trumpet of your life is making an uncertain sound. We're here for about two hours or so. But the most important thing is when you get home. What is in the temple of your life preventing you from being a good disciple of Jesus Christ? Who are the buyers and sellers in the temple of your life? When we plant orange trees, we expect it to produce orange. We will not be happy if they just produce leaves and flowers. God the Father has planted us here to bear fruit. In the book of Luke chapter 13, Luke chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 6. Luke 13, verse 6. It would be good to open to Luke 13, 6. He spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. And he came and sought fruit thereon. And found none. He came to find fruit. He found none. Then he said unto the dresser of his vineyard. Behold these three years. I come seeking fruit on this fig tree. And find none. Cut it down. Did you see that judgment? Cut it down. Why come it the ground? And he answered, said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also. Till I shall dig about it and dung it. If it bear fruit, well, if not, then after that, thou shalt cut it down. Cut it down. That sound, unfortunately, is ringing on the head of so many believers now. Say, say cut it down. It has been using the this, it has been wasting the space. It was using the space that could be used for a fruitful tree. The farmer begged the owner, let me try whether I can help this person for this just one year. So are you a fruitful Christian? Or are you listed among the slothful servants? What in concrete terms? And I say this with all humility and deep respect. What in concrete terms will you say you have done for the Lord since he saved you? he said I spent so many years for you what have you spent for me has the Lord not been waiting a long time for many of us to bear fruit is the Lord not just giving you an extension of time for you to fulfill his plan for your life how sad will it be if we disappoint Jesus like that fig tree 
Jesus came to that fig tree and found no fruit. And he pronounced a curse upon it. So no man shall eat food from thee thereafter. What a tragedy will it be if the heavenly gardener came to our life and found us spiritually unfruitful and pronounced the commandment, cut it down. What a calamity if heaven looks at you and says, change him. This is a serious matter. All the generations that left Egypt to go to the promised land, they were changed. The truth is this. There are already many people in heaven crying upon God to bring the timetable of man to a close so that, so that, so that, so that they can enter into glory. An unfruitful Christian is wasting space in the church of Jesus Christ. And the reason they are unfruitful is because they have refused to become disciples. Plenty of members who are not disciples. Plenty of pastors who are not disciples. Plenty of people who are not disciples. Plenty of believers who are not disciples. And that is the bane of Christianity. That's how we're having ham robbers, banditry, bukwara, all those things because the believers are not discipled. If we all become firebrand for Jesus, like the apostles did, run the gospel of Christ to the place with fire and with power. Will you be his disciple? Rise to your feet now. And all eyes closed. Rise to your feet, beloved. And all eyes closed. If you are here and are not born again, you should just surrender your life to Jesus. Do so very quickly now by saying what I'm going to say after. So, Father, the name of Jesus, I come before you now. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Take control of my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Say that short prayer with me. The ushers are counselors who meet with you. Or you can see our number on the screen to contact us. Listen to me very carefully. Look at me. Listen to me very carefully. When you come to Jesus, you become a Christian. There are two pathways. There is a pathway of salvation. There is a pathway of power. Two pathways. Salvation. Power. The pathway of salvation is by the cross of Jesus. When you say, Father, I'm a sinner. Forgive me my sins. And you surrender your life to him. You determine to follow the Lord. That is pathway of salvation. Which is good. That's what will get you to heaven. But then there is a pathway of power. Pathway of salvation. Pathway of power. Pathway of salvation. Pathway of power. You can decide to pursue just the pathway of salvation and leave the pathway of power. The, the problem with not pursuing the path of power is that the enemy will mess you up full time. That's why, that's why you keep reading, you shall receive 
power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. There is a power you need to survive in this world. There is a power to be a child of God. Said to them who believe in me, he gave them power to become the sons of God. That's power. The Bible also says, he called the disciples unto him. He gave them power against unclean spirits. There is power against unclean spirits. There is power against evil habits. There is power against prayerlessness. That's where the power comes in. And that's what differentiates Christianity from other religions. The baptism of fire. The baptism of the Holy Ghost. Say, behold, someone is coming after me. The lashes of whose shoes I'm unfit to untie. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. All eyes closed. What I want you to do now is to call on the power of God to come upon you. To call on the power of the most high to come upon you. See, but ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You need that power to live the kind of life God wants you to live. If you are here this morning and you have received the baptism in the Holy Ghost, I want you to open the total volume of your voice. And when I say start, you begin to pray in the spirit. And if you are here this morning, you don't speak in tongues. You've now received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Right there where you are. You open your, the volume of your voice to the highest. And begin to shout. Holy Ghost, come upon my life. Holy Ghost, come upon my life. Holy Ghost, come upon my life. Don't change what you are saying. After some time, what you are saying in your mouth will alter. Once it alters, don't go back to the English. Begin to say that new tongue that is coming to your mouth. It will not make sense. It's not supposed to make sense. So that by the time you leave this place today, those who saw you coming inside here, <laughs> and they see you leaving the service, they will see that something has altered. There's no point in just coming to church and go home with a plastic experience. All eyes closed. Father, we are here before you. We have no power of our own. There's a cloud of your power over this place. Let that cloud break into rains of power. Upon all who will call upon you here this morning. From the depth of their hearts. Father, lay your hands upon them. Overshadow them by your power. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Those of you who have not received the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues, with a voice, your highest volume you can gather. Even if that voice wants to go away, keep shouting it. Holy Ghost! Come upon my life. You keep saying it. 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 Those of you who have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, open your mouth and begin to pray in the spirit. Open your 
come out and begin to pray in the spirit. Makatenda ni kaya bo shende rabo kopola bakaya bo ribo soponde kaya bo shente raba na kantenda rabakaya. Your voice is not loud enough. Your voice is not loud enough. Your voice is not loud enough. Open your mouth and begin to pray in the spirit. Masika tene kaya bo shende. Receive the fire. Receive the fire. Receive the fire. Receive the power. 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 Receive the fire. That's the fire. That's the power. But put her real. You can't tell about. Rebo katende kaya ba, makapande kaya, basa tende kaya bo shende raba. Louder, 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 louder. See what is happening. Bopa, laka, rapola, dasetele, katele kaya, bapa la katata, ria katanda kaya bosha. This is not a money to negotiate. Open your mouth, 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 open your mouth. Makapota la kaya bo shende ra bo kopola katanda kaya bo sanda. Ribo sopole kete li kaya bo shente. Holy Ghost, come upon my life. Holy Ghost, come upon my life. Holy Ghost, come upon my life. 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 Open your mouth. Don't be tired. Don't be tired. Don't be tired. You that sister, receive a new tongue. You that brother, receive a new tongue. Receive a new tongue. Receive a new tongue. Receive new fire. New tongue. New fire. 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 Pasikate likayabo shendera bosoto lakayaba. Yes, <laughs> as the Holy Ghost come upon you, speak it out, speak it out. As the Holy Ghost coming upon you, yeah, for the first time you are speaking in tongues. Speak it out, speak it out loud. That's the fire, 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 that is the fire.
So many people have received the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Makatenda le kayaba. Ribosatia le kaya. The kaya boshente. Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Before we conclude our praying, please bring out your tithes and your offering for this meeting. Father, we thank you for the tithes and the offering. Good measure, press down, falling over. Let it be the lot of your children. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. The offering boxes are close to you. Or you can pray using the data on the our page. Don't forget, next Saturday is the annual water of fire. At Power Must Change Us. And you come with your three bottles of water. One that you drink, one for your environment, and one that you keep. God bless you in Jesus' name. As the offering is going on, let's listen to the choir ministration.
your feet now. If you have your oil here, bring it out. As you're supposed to anoint your head and your streets this month. Father, we thank you for this oil. Let your power fall upon the oil in the name of Jesus. Let this oil become environmental sanitizer. Let the power of God flow into this oil in the name of Jesus. As your people use it to anoint themselves, let it become divine immunity. In the name of Jesus, I sanctify, dedicate, consecrate this oil in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. You can anoint yourself now, or you can do it when you get to me. But make sure, make sure you do it. Stretch your right hand towards me here. Father, these hands that are stretched forward here, let the electric fire of God and the power of the Holy Ghost fall upon these hands in the name of Jesus. Let this hand carry fire. Let it carry power. Let it carry fire. Let it carry power. Let it carry fire. Let it carry power. In the name of Jesus. Lay the hand upon your head now. And be quiet. Makapuntali laka ribo kasetenda kayabusha. Ribo pe lika. The center. I challenge anything dwelling in anyone that is constituting a ladder for satanic attack. I confront you by the power of the God of Elijah. That place is not your habitation. For the strangers shall fade away. And they shall be afraid out of their close places. The ladder to witchcraft attack. The ladder to attack by infirmity. The ladder to attack by bad luck. The ladder to attack by frustration. I come against you. I don't want to know how long you have been there. I come out. Through the mouth. Through the nose. Through any organ of the body. Come out. In the name of Jesus. Let that be silence. They are taking their leave now. As the first person. That's number two. That's number three. That's number four. That which is in you that has been inviting demons to your dream is coming out. That which is in you has been causing you loss your, your business is coming out. Everybody with a loud voice. This prayer is only for one minute. Only one minute. But within that one minute, a lot of life transforming transaction will take place. 
you can remove your hand from your head now with the loudest voice you have ever prayed any prayer can you shout this loud and clear holy ghost fire overshadow my lord in the name of jesus name we pray the Lord blesses us from Zion makes his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you you shall go from strength to strength from glory to glory all the prayer requests our Lord answer them by fire in Jesus mighty name we pray and let us share the grace and fellowship the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us